So team, welcome back everyone. Day 23. Uh, even yesterday, we were still debugging our Jenkins issues and we got to a good extent with the help of uh, our students, Aarti, um, Neelam and so on. And we were able to um, get some decent uh, progress in today's live project. So just for information, we have the trainings at 6 p.m. Pacific and we have the um, live projects at 9 a.m. Pacific. Where, uh, it's usually about one and a half hour sessions team and we are exploring everything. So if some of you are not there in that, uh, please, you should join that. So um, here's the video that I just put. Into here. So primarily, I would want all of you to watch this video team. on Jenkins, GitHub, and Java slash QA automation frameworks. So you'll get a concept of how we are trying to execute. Uh, there's still a few more issues there, but that's good. Today team, I definitely want to move on to API. If that's all okay with you. Can I get a yes or no from everyone? Can we start discussing about API? We'll keep doing more Jenkins, GitHub, all of these activities in the project. We'll keep making sure everyone is good with it. But from a training perspective, I think we have to take uh, some progress. Yes, 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 yes. Anyone know? Okay, good. Thank you all. I'm still seeing the yeses coming in. Uh, so, hey, what is API? Before I kind of take you into the document and talk about the tools around it. So it's very simple team. Um, API is application programming interface. So let's say I have a Java program here. Okay. Or a, what we call at the end of it, it becomes a app one. Okay. And here I have another program, but maybe this is a Python program or whatever. And this is my app too. Am I making sense? Now this Java programs want something from the Python program. Is it selecting? Oh, I was using, I was not drawing on the paint team. Let me erase this and draw it. So, API, application programming interface. I'm saying this is Java program. Okay, and just hash the program. And there's a Python program. And one is talking about my customers want weather. I'm sorry, team, the right report, and I'm trying to write it in camel case. Also. And this Python program here is running a weather report. I give this should be after this G, but a weather report. And this is saying that I have a need. And here they're saying I have what you want. So primarily what they're saying is there is one program which is requesting 
request. And there's another program which is responding with the response. I like you. I trust you. I will give. I don't know who you are. I won't give. That is what we're talking about. Now, this Java program, think of it like an application or a website. This Python program, think of it like an application or a website. Now, so that is the basic thing, Steve. In terms of when two different applications want to interact with each other, they have to uh, be able to follow a protocol. And that protocol is to do send a request and get a response. Okay. Send a request and get a response. And Sometimes they have to give details. Now, my customers want weather report. Okay, great. Which weather report? What is the zip code you give me? Give me the zip code. I will give you the details. For example, let me go to weather.com. And we know it's not that great right now um, in our US uh, with the uh, humongous hurricane cyclone that's coming our way. So how do we get what is happening in my vicinity? So I put this, this is my zip code. I said Woodland Hills, California. Now I put my details and I'm able to fetch something specific to mine. Now this is weather.com. Now let's say I go to xc.com, which is the money transfer. And here I see that it is able to get the right accurate information of currencies, a US to a Euro or other popular currencies, charts. You can look at so many things. So this is again a transfer of information. All that we're doing is, so this is one, let's say this. Now, think of um, oops, I didn't do one thing in that. Um, so there is a C sharp code here, and there is a dot, no, not dot net, but maybe a PHP application on MySQL, something of through two different applications. All that they need to do is this guy. What am I drawing with? This guy needs to send a request. And if the right party agrees that, OK, I accept your request, they will send a response. Which is good. Done. Or they may send another response, which is reject or deny or reject or error or not available, server 404, 200, whatever different things you need. 200 is good. But, uh, so in your whole thing, what is happening is a data packet that is flowing to you. There's a packet of data that is going, getting transferred. That data was a lot in terms of what we call as an XML file or an extended markup language. And now we are talking about JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. We will learn about these two uh, briefly in the next session team. So these two help us to send packets of data in a manner that is easily understandable for both parties. So primarily, both these parties have said, OK, I agree with XML or I agree with JSON. And this party also said, I agree with XML or with JSON. And they're in sync right now. So that's your agreement that API brings in. So you got this concept? Now, this I need one more diagram before and 
team i honestly don't prepare for this these sessions i just come very impromptu because it has to flow with the right idea all right now ting 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 yeah simple so let's say i have an application okay now from my application you can log in to my application using a google gmail or a facebook or a linkedin profile account so what is happening here a user is going to come to your application will then have to log in so how can the user log in now here he or she will have to provide the username and password now this has to be stored securely or whatever way that is absolutely sure but still whatever we giving here has to be sent to gmail or to facebook or to linkedin that is your request as a api application programming interface from what color can i use now one app to another app e all okay i got a question is it same as placing order using gpay paypal apple pay perfect exactly because they will take your information transfer so it is always about transfer of data and depending on the data only it will log in if you give incorrect information no login sorry i put a check mark there if you give a right information yes login correct so that is the difference now let us look at the same from something as an application there is this website called rectrest.in request response the same thing i'm saying i want to send a request i will get a response this application sorry this application simulates it for us it holds certain data it holds a platform that it's made publicly available to us to play play around and you all should do the same thing to me so now see there are different types of requests that you can send okay all of these are the different types of requests that is sent this becomes the request and this becomes the response now let us say for example get a single user detail api users to and this detail is so and so on now look at this url if i click on i'll get the same detail okay great does it mean if i say 3 will i get the next user wow so does it mean if i say 30 i will get the other user oops nothing there so it all depends on what we are sending and what we are getting back so this is a request we are sending and we are getting a response from it so single user api request get a response now let's go to the google doc i explained to you here and then we can come back i actually also took few more ideas earlier um, in the previous session i said think of it like a barter system even before currency coins cash check e transfer all this came it was barter i have something i can give you you have something you give me that back that's was the whole idea concept team 
and then we set points because there's some valuation to it. Then we set cash because it will hold some more details into it. Then we set a check that it holds additional content it can hold. Now we are saying XML and JSON as a way of the how what data we will send. So I was speaking of scenarios web application user page login. Your request is username, user password. Response signed in, not signed in. Sign in and make a change. So let's say add new users, update your profile, delete your profile. You want to view or look at the information. So this is the application that you can do certain things. So any application, correct? It's not just this application. Any application, we can do certain things on it. And that is more important for us. Now, what is CRUD? This is important. Let me talk about CRUD also in an image. Am I boring team? Am I too slow? Sometimes I feel I'm too fast or too slow. So feedback will help. Someone said yes. Oh, sorry, that was four minutes back. I'll accept them all going hopefully. So we're talking CRUD. What is CRUD? See, when you take a file. This file will have some content in it. Now, what is it that we can do with a file? You can create a file. You can read a file. You can update a file. And you can delete a file. These are the operations team. So a user can log in and you can create an account or sorry, create an account and log in and you can read all your emails and see what this will do, update your information, whatever you want to do. And if you want, you can also delete your Gmail and everything, correct? That is the whole concept. Now, in this, what we are trying to do is it's all about files, correct? Where will files be team? Files will be actually happily stored in a nice database. So my files are there in a database. And I know that they'll be there. So any human or machine or AI or ML have to make an access. They have to send one of these four. Only four things, team. Remember, create, have the authority to create a file in a database. Read. You only can read, view. You cannot change. You cannot delete. You cannot update. Update. Okay, you've got some powers. You can make certain changes to it. Delete. You have superpowers, like you can create, delete, and so on. That are the basic database operations. Now, the reason this becomes important is in a web base. So this, whatever showing you this image, is also logical for your local machine. If you are a user, you log in. You have certain rights on certain folders. Someone else logs into your laptop using a different credential, let's say guest user. Then they will have only limited ones. So they will not have all the access unless they hack it. So now it comes to your HTTP protocol, which is your hypertext transfer protocol. And this belongs to your web applications. And to do that, we have a few actions or methods that we Get is a read method team, where we are trying to get information from a database that is there. Don't think of it like a database anymore because when it comes to JSON and XML, they're very, very small files. I'll show you. 
okay uh, and it's also written here see data or body json so it's not too much database is it's got too much structure to a database these are just data files we will get some information we can post some information like creating a new record put or patch put means it will add a new record to it it's already there it'll add one more patch will overwrite delete is to take it out completely so these are very similar in terms of what we talked about the CRUD operations we don't call it curd team we call it CRUD because it's in the order of uh, what you can do okay of course creator has the great power there's no question but after that it goes down and it comes to superpower all right where are we now head uh, data or body JSON. example oh now i was talking to this button and see api uses now team if your patient can i talk about postman to you all see what we were doing in this there is api request button so see now all that it is doing is this list users when i say list users it is a request that i'm sending and the response 200 is okay all of these are response codes team here see http status response codes one means anything starting with one is it's got some information it's, do, it's just sending you back an in information anything starting with two 200 100 xx is 100s 200 series is success client is accepted your request and will deliver is delivered successfully whatever you wanted 300 is a redirection it is sending your request to someone else and maybe they will respond back and that is redirection client serve sorry four is a client error like you know 404 error page not found and so on 500 is a server where the server itself is down and you know you can't really reach the server so these are the different type of status ports so whenever we send us information as a request we get a response and the response will belong to one of these five categories and those are these five categories 200 is good single user very good also logged in single user not found what happened 404 and you see that it took a little time to run that like a second almost saying user 23 is not found why user 23 not there same how about 21 we were searching for 30 earlier not there 18 not there 17 what's happening 12 okay there 13 not there so i think from 13 onwards there are no more users there are only 12 users in the application there is i think i'm going on the same side okay. so now all that we're doing is uh ding 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 okay see press now see single user not found 404 what is 404 Client error, it is denied. Not found. Nothing is there for the data. So there's nothing you can distribute. List, resource. So this is again. Now, let me talk very briefly, team, about JSON before I get into very briefly nothing more tomorrow i'll also show you w3 schools and how what is json single user where is the login bro okay wait one second. create we'll have a login see look to create all these are get get now if i want to create a new user i have to post if i have to update an existing user i will put or patch and then there's delete also here see now look at this post i clicked on this post as a api call and it is doing a post this is my input data 
this is a json data file or a dot json data it primarily holds json primarily holds information it's called as a key value pair left side is your key as to what is the attribute right side is the value so name is morpheus job is leader and that's good now let's see update the existing one name is morpheus job is zion resident and that gets updated updated so our responses are good from this post or put or let's see this patch morpheus zion resident 200 that's also fine delete and i'm not taking you too deeply yet about all of it just get a perspective i'm trying to delete a user response to users to what happened maybe i don't think it was done and now let's talk about postman so what is postman team? it's very simple it's one of the most simplest tools you'll ever see which is good for the tool so go to postman.com uh, i thought this postman that i have a nice postman.com hmm. so like i suggest name suggested name it's posting you want to post things so automated process of doing some of the api testing or api programming hmm. um simply click on download install just follow the steps team i'm assuming this postman already here on my machine so i'm going to launch this whatever we saw in request.in we'll try and repeat a few of them using a different tool we don't know what was happening in request.in right we're clicking something is happening and something is coming now let's do it ourselves okay all right so postman is primarily a windows or any client desktop application i think it also hopefully works for mac um once you install it you launch it and you basically get to a simple window like this. so it's not too complicated all we're doing in this is click on this new that's the only big orange one and we can say any of these things like request collection i like collections you know why because i can put many things into one folder that will run uh, one after the other if i want i can run all of them or individuals it's like a playlist think of it for apis so i'll click on collection and i'll say this is org 2020 create didn't give anything much and there's nothing to run yet so that's zero requests in it. I'm going to expand this. There'll be nothing. I can add requests. Now, only if you send a request, you'll get a response, correct? So I'll say request one. And let us say, ding, 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 ding. Um, I'm sorry. Let's get this button. list single user okay. i'm sorry team i didn't show you one of the most important ones login successful email password 200 token what does this mean this is my input data and this is my output response request input data as json output response which is 200 okay as a token that you're good to go if you change this data then it will not give you the same response because something has gone wrong so that is login successful login unsuccessful like i mentioned now for example this one it says missing password and register successful i want to register as a user email password very good 
done that name taken now if you want to unregister like you know from the database email um, not unregister sorry register unsuccessful then you could not register with a bad email address. that was the one and of course it's a bad email and a bad no password so these are various things that you'll do team, typically on application, but sometimes these apps are talking to the other apps to get responses back to us. So we have to send a request, we'll get a response. So now postman and director is dot in. Let's go and try and log in from there. So on postman, I'll say rec one, login. Okay, save to this. Now see. Here, what is the uh, request that we are sending? What do we want to do? We want to get some details of post or put or patch, delete. Till here are very API common team. Um, others are more features or other applications and so on that you can try and ignore. You don't need too many of these right now. Just the first. Now for a login, we are doing a post because we're sending data, okay? We're getting data, we'll, we'll get it from get. But post will send data and get it first. Sorry. Are you all still with me team? Another five, 10 minutes at least. Just bear, be patient, we're gonna get there. Uh, ding, 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 ding. Now, so I'm gonna say post. And I have to give a URL here. Where should I log in? So this will be my login URL. Okay. I'll give that URL. Can I do get funds before this? Get SU invalid. What is this? Uh, I don't understand. What is this? Did I give that name? The first one login I gave. This will fail if I just say same because it didn't get the information missing email or user. If I go to headers, actually body, and say data here, and say raw, and here instead of text say JSON, and copy this data that we were using for successful login. Put it here. And now send, did you see that? Token. Okay. okay, so let me explain. Postman is a tool that helps us to send API requests and get API responses. And in that you can use JSON and there are XML and other formats. JSON JavaScript object notation has become more popular these days. Um, and all this requests and responses that we're sending is about interactions. I'm gonna get into a little bit more technical words there. But this is a post request that I put. Now, this is for successful login. So now let's create one more. Um, add a request. And let's say a very simple one first. Um, Rect to I'll say, since I started, get basic. Nothing much in this. So when I say get in this, I'm not even sending any details. Let us a single user. Okay. So this is the single user. Okay. But yeah, this is the UR. That's it. Okay, that's the only data I'm sending. Okay, where am I? Get basic. Get See, earlier it was showing different name for me. Now it's good. Like to get basic. 
to be the same. Okay, that's it. In this case, I don't need to send any body into it because the data is already there. I mean, there's no data required for it. Just the getter response is enough. And I'll send and it'll give me a response saying, oh, user two is this. And here, let me rename this to get basic user existing. Select, don't see, done. Now I'm going to add one more. Rec three user, sorry, Rec three user not existing. Now see, save the bus. So I have now three requests in my org 2020 login, which is actually a why is login saying as put see login everything is gone here. The URL, everything, but login, I don't know why. Let's do it again. Login was a we are getting details from the app. Login successful. Post. So that's the URL. Post. Because once you post the credentials, you'll be able to get the response. Put the body and click first. Raw. Choose JSON. Because that's the data. And Let's get the correct data. Did I give the right one? Login successful. API login only. I'm sorry. The URL I'll change it. URL? Yeah, API login. That's correct. That's all I did. So now that's right. If I send it, I should get it 200 OK. Right now, let me see if I go into control C, control V. I just did that. Um, login copy. I'm gonna go here and rename it. I'll call this as a fourth request. So we're just simulating thing, we're just playing to see. Oh, so this is how applications interact with each other. Login wrong. And here, let us say. I I don't know if it requires bad password or not. Let me see. Oopsie, I'm changing the original one. That's wrong. Send done. Click on login now. Nothing is here. I see it's why would it say get here when it's post here? Huh? Login wrong. I duplicated it, it didn't even get the URL. Body wrong. JSON paste. And I'm going to delete the password. Okay, so that's my JSON data. And I send this, but I don't have the URL. Let's get the URL. URL is the same as login. Unsuccessful or not doesn't matter. It's the same URL, but data is different. See? Same URL, but the data is different. And send. Say, error missing password. Correct. So login, login. So all this is good. So this becomes my collection. Bring a star, which is going up. And I'm going to run this collection. Let me make it one star and it goes back to that. So, this is to run the entire collection team, one after the other. Let's see. What is bad is it, it's though it's got a lot of this saying get, get, get. I don't understand why it should say this. So, we're running four API commands now. 
that not all four gets boss. Why is it doing that? That is strange, right? I've been putting as post. Is there a save that I'm missing? Is there somewhere save? There's nothing to save. It's post. Why are you saying get? See, it's saying get, 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 get. <laughs> Login. Login C is gone to get again. I think there's an error team in Postman. I mean, I hope because I don't know what else could have caused this. I have nice login successful URL. Data. I'll try and reinstall it again tomorrow. You should try the same. It should work. There's nothing wrong with this. What are you doing? So send this. Yeah, get 200. Okay. Token. Good. So you'll see um, your second thing. Am I seeing a save somewhere? I can see a save. That's phenomenally bad. Now it's got saved. See, this is gone again. Everything is gone. I'm sorry. I'll quickly do it right away. I, I, I didn't notice that there was a save. There was a horizontal scroll. That is very bad. I mean, I didn't observe it at all, team. It was not at all visible for me. So now I see the save. Uh, login is done. Let me make sure. Send token. Get basic user existing. So for this, I only need URL. Save. Send first. Then save. Okay, got it. Get basic URL not existing. Same, but I'll put 22, 23, 22. Send. Yeah, that's the response. That's what it gives us. And save this. <clears throat> Last one, login wrong is a post. Sorry, I was trying to go too fast. I click copy link headers. Yeah, paste. Need to go to the body. None. Only for post, I need data team. There's nothing else to pay. Post or this. Just try to get anything that's available. So just email is there. No password. So all of the same things we could do from our code as well, be it Python or Java. Using requests or um, rest assured and so on. So this is post send fail. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, what happened? Is the URL correct? That's the problem. If I put the wrong URL, it will not even take the body. So now send missing email done save. So now that has become my collection in Postman. There are four requests running and four responses that will come. So now I can click on this and say run. And put it up here. And it's running each 
and all greens is all good. Uh, that rest, at least it could run whatever we, we gave. And 200, okay, 200, okay. It was not existing, not found, bad request, not found. Now to the same, you could add even very simple requests like, How do we know if our website is opening, responding okay from the server and so on? So any website that you go, you put the URL and say https colon slash slash let's say go.itlearn.com and you'll know if that website is existing and it's sending us a valid response. Okay, it's giving us the entire body also, and that's the um response for us so i'm going to save this now let's say i duplicate this and get website copy rename it to get website wrong i am assuming assuming that there's no website like this let's send and it says it cannot find that now let's run this collection. So even when you're trying to ping a website, it's nothing but you're sending a request. Hey, I want to accept your web, uh, access your website. Okay, may I? Now let's run. So all done, everything done. How it takes any time team unless the site is slow or it's not a big details. So 200 okay, that website is okay. Why did this give? Doesn't have any tests, but this should not have. Oh, I didn't save. See, you see that it still went to go.itl and go.itl. Because I guess here, I didn't save maybe. So once, now it's on the collection. Okay, done. So this is all post printing. So you can create a lot of collections in Postman and it will do what you want it to do. You see, now it went to board.it, but this is a bad website. This doesn't exist. So it had an issue. Postman is one for more info. All right, so we'll continue from here. We'll also look at a little at JSON. We'll create, try and create some scripts around it and we'll see uh, through the session. Any questions on it, team? Uh, sorry, Neelam, I see your hand. Uh, actually, I have no question about uh, right now. I, I don't have any question about the postman and stuff. Hmm. But uh, Today I am facing with the Eclipse problem. If you give me a hint, like why I'm getting the sure. red exclamation mark on my each and every project. Maybe presenter. Oh yeah. Um, I resolved this error um, maybe a month ago when we started training, oh. but I don't remember how did I do it. And right now, like my brain is frozen, I can't think about why I'm, uh -huh. I'm sorry. I'm reading on I'm Google sorry. that maybe the Eclipse is. Uh, yeah. I have to downgrade the Eclipse because this is upgrade your Eclipse with the JDK and uh, latest JDK and Java. And but I downgrade that yesterday because of the Jenkins. Uh -huh. And today when I'm opening it, it's showing me the red yeah. exclamation mark. Yeah, you can't basically open the same. What happens is, let us say we execute some code in the newer version, building it and executing. It it doesn't somehow work correctly when we're doing it in a, another version. It's a, it's a totally a Eclipse thing right now. Um, so I have to reinstall? So you took a code. You basically took a code that you already wrote and you're trying 
projects and you try to add them to the new eclipse environment correct or what's this no i just open like normally we open the eclipse i just open it and then i i saw this exclamation mark on everywhere Okay. Uh, let's see once. So just say file new project. Let's see what's happening. Let's try the basic Java program. Oh. Why? Hmm. Project is not exist. Okay. No, you're clicking on the wrong one. Oh, yes. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Take your mouse over on NN1. What does it say? Already? Okay. It doesn't have... say anything right now. So... Click and take your mouse over. Mm. Yeah. Why so, okay. Let's let's create a simple Java program. Nothing is working, right? You're saying. Yeah, it says, yes. uh, I'm gonna show you. Yeah. Hmm. No, you cannot run it. Ah, could not. This is the same issue that I was getting to, right? Not find unload. Yes. Yeah. So click on the problems. Expand error 12 items. So expand that. Uh, this the build path error. Uh, what's that? Just expand the column, no? First column. Okay. Build path error, sorry, so on. Hmm. This is module. Uma, I'll do it tomorrow morning with you. Installing. No. Okay, let's remove this first of all. Why do we have this? The. Yeah, these two. Oh yeah, we are not working in Selenium. Right now. Okay. Why does it? That's fine. JR is fine. Apply and close. Oh, you, why there is a cross mark you asked on JR? Yes. Yeah, let's look at that. I'm sorry. I didn't mm -hmm. Expand. Build path entry is missing. Or dot eclipse JDT launching JRE container. It's an eclipse installation issue. Eclipse Java build path. It's not. It doesn't even know where the JRE is. Did you downgrade mm -hmm. Java? Yes. What is this Java? It's showing Java SC14. Java SC14 unbound. Uh, click on that. Oh, that one I deleted. Yeah, un uninstall it. You didn't say. You didn't say here no. Oh, so Lord. click on the drop down. Now, which is yours? Latest one. This one, eight two sixty. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Put that. One eight eight eight. Safe. Oh, I'm close. 
at least cross mark is gone close Double click on this Java test. Doesn't see anything issue there. Yeah, this issue is gone. Which issue? The exclamation mark. Then expand that. Let's look at some source code in it. Run it. So you put that. Hmm. What is the problem with n n n n one? Just yeah, because it is created. Everything you have changed each one. Oh, okay. Each project you have to go in Java build path. Your mm -hmm. JS was not connected to the latest one. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, so you can just delete it. Edit it. So. Oh yeah, we had it. Two sixty. Next. This one. Okay, I have to manually do it in each and every project. Yes. Or whenever you're creating, put it next. As of now, because that's your Eclipse is still. Whenever you install Eclipse, your JRE path it took it wrongly. You're in. Open your environmental variables for me once. Mm -hmm. Arti, Uma, are you able to try what I'm saying here? Similarly, with Neelam, is that helping? This path, the C program file Java, JDK and JRE. Uh, which is the one you don't want? You I don't want this and this. You don't want them, right? Right now, yes, because I download. Delete them, please. Other one. Okay. Yeah. So when you create a new project, not edit. Okay. Delete. Delete button is there. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. Another one. Yeah. Okay. Where did you where did you all get these files from? I didn't get it yet. Which one? JDK 1.8261 downloads. JDK 1.8261 downloads. You downloaded this versions, right? Yes, yesterday. Ah, so I didn't do it yet. Oh. From Markle website, yeah, it's asked me to log in and it forgot. Everything. Okay, so does anyone have files? Is it possible? Is it individual or can we put it somewhere and get it all of the same EXE file? Now, can we put it to yeah. a G? How big is it, team? Oh, it's about 500 600 me again. It was on the download uh, website, right? How big is it? 500 600 me? I don't know. I did. We'll see. No problem. Um, yeah, so now say create new project and try what is happening. Oh, new new project, me. please. New project, yeah. Yeah. Where? Uh, here. Yeah. What is MMNN? I'm not able to understand. Okay. Just MM. Java or, yeah. Just give, name, give it no. name. No. No. See, go to file. Show me slowly. New project. Oh, okay. Only project. What were you doing? I didn't understand. Java project. project. Java project. I want Java project. Here, wait. Use an existing JR is there. Click there first. Okay. Yes. So it does a yeah. So now you go when you create. Mm. 
and when you restart it, it'll be set. Please restart and let me know after the session. Okay. Okay, all right. See now. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Uma, you want to show now anything? I can spend a few minutes if you want. Okay, yes. Thank you, uh, Neela. Thank you, Kartik. Okay, Uma, I made it. Hello. Um, Karthik, I was just trying to get a different version of uh, Eclipse. Uh, the problem is I, uh, the installer is not letting me do it. So I'm just getting this socket error. Uh, so when I went through Google, it say some INI files like you have to delete it. I have been trying this for the past two days and uh, sometime Ramu also helped. Uh, they couldn't figure out uh, for me to uninstall the Eclipse and move on to a different version. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So how do we resolve that? And uh, any, so what is the issue with the current existing working version of Eclipse? Um, I mean, I talked to most of the uh, group teams in the class. They said, like, I have the 202003. Many of them said, like, they had some issues with that. Yeah. So they wanted me to change to 06. And even the Eclipse marketplace, when I click this, it doesn't uh, let me. I mean, it doesn't go either. And it is some firewall issue. I have a lot on, uh, installed in my system. I'm I want to try to move it now and see whether it might work. I need to do that. So there were many issues because of this. I'm work Jenkins. Uh, I'm, I'm able to run it in Eclipse in command prompt. It works, uh, but when I take the same program to Jenkins, it's giving me an error. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, but your regular Java and Jenkins should work in respective of Eclipse. Um, I'm not sure, Karthik. Uh, because like, it's like the same program. Like is... Java. Mm -hmm. Drive a colon something a slash. And um, you give that route in your executable batch file in Jenkins. It'll run. Yeah, I can show you. Let's try that. This file is there. No, where is this file? Which file you are asking, Karthi? Whatever program is showing. Um, Copy that. Eclipse. One. Your Eclipse file. You want me to show the path of this? Yes, please. We'll take the file. Okay. Keep it in the folder. Run it on command from from Jenkins. That will run. Uh, in command prompt, this works, Karthik, but the same program in Jenkins, it uh, threw me through an error. Okay, let's try. I don't think it should be done. Sure. Okay. See, this is the program, Karthik, which I included the batch file, the Java program test. If that is already been mm -hmm. Eclipse, there's a problem. Uh, in my Eclipse? So, Show me what you have, then I'll show you what. Sure. Uh, this is my console output. The same program. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, PRG has been compiled by more recent version of the Java runtime. So that's the problem. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Okay. It's code. In your Windows System Explorer. In my System Explorer, where the code is. Yes, please. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. It's here, the Java program. Okay. 
Okay, Java program source. Okay, good. Open a notepad, write that path. I already have it here, Karthik. Okay, yes, good. CD, Java program source. Java C, PRG. Okay. Now, see, this is the problem. Now, okay. go to command prompt. Okay, copy this into command prompt. Run it. Okay. What is the program actually? Hmm. Uh, it just uh, displays one text as first program. Why is it waiting? Okay. Yeah, so it's working in command prompt. Okay. That's good. Now, let me show you just see a Jenkins job. Um. Should I go here to the Java program test? Ah, yes, please. and then configure. There's a lag. Are you with me? Yeah. Did you click? Sorry, Kathik, I didn't hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, configure. All right. Go to the tag. Go to the project, which is the Java PRG test. No. Yes, correct. Go there, please. Click on it. Uh, click on what, Karthi? Configure. Configure, okay. I want to see what did he give in the build. So click on build in the tab on the top. Okay, CD. Copy and paste it once again just for my sake from the notepad. Uh, from the notepad. Just in case. So. Say. Go back in the browser and build now. You click on it twice. Uh, I think so, Karthik. I think my system is a little low. No, right, don't right click, just click on that drop down. And you can go to console report. And actually, red is bad. <laughs> okay, no problem. I'll do a very simple thing. Okay. Mm, go to your Windows System Explorer. Show me the code. Quickly, we will copy that code and put it somewhere. Okay. And, and try again. The, I didn't get Karthik Windows System Explorer. Go to your Explorer, System Explorer, where your Java program is. Okay. Mm. Here, yeah, click on it, control C. The whole program. The file. Why did you open it? I didn't say double click. Just click and say control C. Copy. copy. Go to C drive. Create another folder. Don't give all the spaces and all that, no, please. Oh, yeah. Just say something like A or something simple. Just with testing, or just say test if you want. Okay. Double click. Okay, paste it here. Now change it in your notepad. Uh, okay. Copy the one notepad. 
copy the one on your notepad, paste it below that. You mean to the past notepad? in the notepad. No, you don't need all that. You know Java tempo, you know, it's hardly anything. It's only one change. So I have to type the same uh, code there? Yes. Okay. Run it on your command. Okay, don't run it on your command prompt. Mm -hmm. Don't go to Jenkins directly once. Create a new item. I'm sorry, it took so long, team. Thank you for sending me those links. Nice. Good job. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, this is what is happening. Mm. This JNI issue I used to face a long time back. So you're, okay, so just open your uh, system explorer. Where are the files are? Huh? Your Java, like program files, C drive, program files. Oh, C drive, program files, okay. Java? Java, so yes. What are these? So, which are yours? Uh, Karthik, uh, today morning I uh, downloaded this JDK and the JRE. Previously, I used to have only this JDK 14.0.2. Now, we mm -hmm. still have to uninstall this. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I couldn't uninstall this one. And if I uninstall, my total Eclipse is not working. So, I'm just changing the uh, path in the environment variable to the 1.8.0261, but I get a runtime error uh, when I do that. Now I can quickly show you with this program. Like, for example, uh, no. See, if you go to your uninstall programs on your Windows. Okay. And type Java. My system is a little slow, Karthik, just a minute. Sure. Java, please type. Yeah, I typed Karthik. Okay. It's taking a little while to. Yeah. It filter the results down to us. Uma, right? Yeah, yes, Karthik. So see here, now we have a few of these. Now you might want to uninstall all of these. Okay, got it. Keep, and maybe reinstall the ones you need again. Just the two, uh, JRE okay. and uh, JDK, okay. What do you say? I will do that, Karthik. And nah. uh, I'll try so also. So we can be confused little... with this, and it will be system parameters also, environmental variables. So, environmental, yes, sure. Yeah. Okay, Karthik, I'll do that. One of this could be the cause. 
this. Okay, so I can remove this uh, Java 8 update also, no Karthi? So uh, all uh, the things you're asking me to uh, uninstall. At least the ones I see, uh, 825, 826, but see, 825 you also have Java, J Java SC development kit 13 version. And again, you have 825 Java 14 version. Uh, right? That is because like I keep deleting it and getting it ah, back so from the recycle yeah. bin. Just click here or right click, click. On this one? Yes, please. And just say uninstall. Okay, sure. Okay, remove everything. And since you have the exe files, you can install it easily. Sure, I'll do that correctly. Okay. Then I can let you know tomorrow so class. To close. Yeah. Of course, close your eclipse for it. So, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try that. I know it's a little frustrating that the tools don't work for us, but that's part of our learning. We'll go through it. Sure. All right, thank you. I'll see you all tomorrow then. Thank uh, you. Anyone else? One second. As well, do we need? to set two path for JRE and JDK. No, no, no. You only can set the path for your JRE for your creating a Java project and all that. So it will give you the choice, right? So that's good. You don't need to set two paths. Your Eclipse will require. All right, team. Why Arthi you set two parts? Installation parts you're saying? Sorry, Arthi. Uh, should I make you presenter or what? Arthi, may you presenter see if you can show? Karthik, uh, everything is working fine for me, but I installed two parts uh, in the environmental variable, both the JDK and ah, JRE. environmental variable, that is fine. Here is fine. Yeah. I was thinking in the Java build part. No, 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 not in the Java build. Okay. That is fine. Uh, Ari, what was your question? Karthik, uh, you know, to set Java underscore home, we need to uh, give the path name. We need to give the JRE or and JDK, right? Both. Um, the environmental variable. Not on the environmental variable. Uh, yes, yes, on the advanced system. Yes. System, system. Ah, path variable, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, path variable is okay. System variable, uh, we need to uh, create Java underscore home. In that, uh, before bin folder, we have to copy the exact uh, path and we need to give correct. Right? That's what okay. I'm asking. Correct, right. till the bin folder for both of them. Or, uh, okay, that's what I ask either JRE and JDK both or only JRE? Both, both. So is it, it's, it's working for both, correct? That's what you're giving, correct? Karthi and... Uh, sorry? Karthi? So, is it working? Yes, Karthi, for me it's working. I didn't get your okay. question, but it's working. Yeah, so you need to keep both in the path. In the path. Yes, Karthi. Okay, good. All right, great team. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye now.